Hello, my name is Nicole, and today I want to take you on a tour of my elementary art classroom. So if you don't know by now, I am a full choice art teacher. I embrace the teaching for artistic behavior philosophy of art education. So in my classroom, that manifests as full choice. So I have centers set up in the classroom and each day the kids get to choose what they make and how they make it. I've been wanting to give you a tour of my classroom, a complete tour of my classroom for some time now. It was just about finding the time to stay after school to do it. So I found some time, so let's get started. So this is the entrance to my room. This door here is the main door and immediately upon entering there is the drawing center. So the drawing center is organized in this toy organizer. So um, this is a great option if you don't have a lot of storage or a lot of shelving units. Um, so I use this toy organizer to display pencils, colored pencils, pastels, markers, crayons, rulers, that kind of thing. All of the things necessary for the drawing center. And this year it also houses some of my collage materials as well. So glue sticks and scissors and um, paper edgers. On the bulletin board, I have my rules posted. So these rules, I believe were originated by Julie Tool. And it is take care of yourself, take care of each other and take care of the studio. So very simple, very basic, but really covers just about everything that you can think of. I have two posters in the middle section, and um, these are small for now. I'm waiting for our poster printer to sync up to our Wi-Fi to get them printed larger. But I do have these copies of these or PDFs of these in my TPT store. Um, right now they are small, like I said, but I have 18 by 24 PDFs available and also 16 by 20 if anyone needs them. So one poster is just what is an artist and uh, there are a bunch of different behaviors listed there, things that an artist does and um, exhibits on a daily basis. And then I have the art process for the kids mapped out so that they know that you know making is part of the process, sure, but also playing and planning, reflecting and sharing are part of that process as well. You'll also notice that I have a bag holder here. I find that students often need bags for transporting their artwork home, at least at the elementary level. So I do keep a holder here with bags so that the kiddos can grab those as needed. I also have some other things over here on the side, um, a room tour guide. So when I have a new student, I assign someone to be their tour guide. And there's a clipboard here with a tag and that list um, is available so that kiddos can go through that list and so they know exactly what each new student needs to know in order to find success in the art room on day one. This is my chalkboard. This is where I list the available centers each day. This is where I would list if there's a, a maximum number of students per center. So right now painting is eight students max. My mini museum has, stu has two students max. So I just write that with a chalk marker. And then over here on the right hand side, uh, we do some self assessments here on the way out. So right now we're focusing on displaying our work and present, um, getting it ready for display and presenting it and hanging it in our hallway. So I am checking in with them over the next couple of weeks about their comfortability, about their level of understanding for that. So we have art numbers here and we use the art numbers to not only choose our center, but also to self assess at the end. And I talk more about that in another one of my videos, which I will link here in one of the cards at the top. I'll also link in my description too. So this half of my chalkboard contains a help wanted board up here in the top left corner. So if I have something that absolutely is necessary needs to be done and I just don't want to do it, I pass it off to a student. So something like cleaning certain bins, it looks like I have written there now, um, organizing the collage drawer, something that um, is good for the students to learn but also take something off of my plate. So I list them on the whiteboard and then I have three spots spots there. I allow three kiddos per class to help. I also have an art affirmation of the week. This was something I started at the beginning of the year. This was my first affirmation and 10 weeks into school it's still up there. So the art challenge though, this is something that I post every week. I just use the chalk marker and I give them a new challenge each week. Something that will just provide an idea for kiddos who need an idea or something to challenge uh, students who need a little bit of a stretch. So this week it's build something in architecture and then draw it. In the top right corner we have our timer. It is a visual timer so if I turn it, it, it creates a red section so that the kiddos know how 
how much time they have left to work. Next, down in the bottom right, we have our Artsonia code. So students always know how to access Artsonia. They can just scan that code and log right in. And then over here, these badges, they're basically manager tags. So each center, once all of them are open, will have a manager and that manager will have just one specific task to help um, with maintenance. So for example, the clay manager spritzes the clay with water at the end of class. The sculpture manager provides tape for each student, about 12 inches of masking tape for each student. So below here we have more drawers, class drawers. I do have some with the red stop signs. Those are just storage for me. So anytime a student sees a stop sign, they know that that is a teacher section of the classroom. So in this section here, I have my desk area. So nothing super exciting here except the cabinet. I keep some over-the-door um, shoe organizers and in those pockets I keep must ask for materials so things like Mod Podge I have glitter stored in there things that I really want to make sure are used sparingly and only when necessary so iPads are here the students can check those out for drawing purposes or for art Sonia purposes and here on the right hand side I have clothespins so each student has an art number and they use the clothespin with their art number to check out an iPad for the day. So on the top here, I have a green, the very top right here, this is painted green, the side is painted yellow, and then this one is painted red. So if they're not using an iPad, it's on red. If they're using an iPad, they put it on their clip on green, and if they're waiting, they put their clip on yellow. That way students feel like there's some sense of fairness and there is a, a line or a, a, a wait area so I have desks this year spaced out to maintain social distancing I normally have five really large tables in the section in the center of my room which are greatly missed right now but we are making it work I do have an art number on each desk so this kiddo is eight so they would move the eight magnet to choose their center and then I do have those numbers also listed on the floor for lineup as well so over here we have our 3d storage cabinets so at the bottom I have M, T, U, W. I have them um, organized by day. So if kiddos uh, come to art on Tuesday, they would open the Tuesday door and each class has a shelf for that. So I'm really lucky to have these shelves. I talk more about managing student artwork in this video up here, I'll link it in the card. But you'll notice there's a lot of signage in my classroom. Tab teachers typically believe that the classroom is the second teacher. So providing a lot of learning menus and resources and visuals for the students so that they can access them when needed and it will help them make art independently. So I have the basics, the must know things on the outside of my cabinets. And then I use the inside of my cabinets for more display space. So I try not to keep too much on the outside just to help reduce the visual noise. I find that if there's too much on the outside or if there's too much in the classroom, it can be a little bit overstimulating. So I like to use the inside of my cabinets so here's another look at some of the visuals I think are uh, must-haves for, for me, for my elementary level. So what do artists draw, um, what to recycle, what to keep at collage, the sticky meter, some sculpture attachments, those kinds of things. You'll notice above my cabinets here, I do use that for extra storage if necessary, and sometimes it's necessary. And then all the way at the top, this is our grading system. So at my school, we use one, two, and three. Um, we don't use um, O's or S's or letter grades. So the one is above and beyond, so exceeding expectations. The two is meeting expectations, and the three is below expectations. So when I came up with these, I had the students help me decide what it would look like to meet expectations in the art room. And then we decided what would be above and beyond and then below as well. So those became posters and those are displayed there throughout the year. And I have the students reference those when it's, t when it's time for grades to come out, when it's time for report cards. And I have them give themselves a grade using the magnets on the chalkboard. That way 
um, I know if the grade I'm giving them meets the grade they think they re should receive because I want to make sure we're on the same page and if there's some sort of discrepancy then I can follow up with them. So here we have our paper area, our paper station I guess. On the top I have colored pieces of construction paper, um, I have some origami paper here and then some tag board here in case students need to make their own stencils. The size tester is here. Um, a size tester is definitely recommended if you have a sculpture center because kids will build very big. And again, I talk more about that in my managing student artwork video. All of my paper is here, so I have um, limited items or things that I limit. I have a red sticker, so drawing paper, painting paper, good paper is limited, and I put a sticker there to indicate how many they can have. I have cut cardboard at the, in the bottom drawer. Okay, so I pre-cut this cardboard for them, which is also recommended if you have the littles like I do. Collage drawer. Okay. And then paper. So paper is, I do have various sizes normally. Clearly I need to restock this, but I have some regular drawing paper and then I have, um, I will cut this in half and put smaller sheets here. And then I have tracing paper here. My painting paper is similar to the drawing and then my play sketch. Um, it's just paper that I've collected either from the copy room, so good on one side paper, or paper that's been donated. Had um, had like an engineering company or something donate a bunch of reams of this paper. So that is now in the play sketch drawer. So this is the sculpture center. Um, this used to have more items or, or more storage. Again, with COVID, it's now condensed a little bit, but I actually think this is working out really nicely and probably something I'll keep. So I just have one big bin down here with recyclables for them to use. And then I have a smaller bin over here with small things like bottle caps and things that would get lost in this larger bin. And both of these things have a limit, so two, and then the smaller one says three. Up here, I have my hot glue station, which we do not use yet, but I will eventually allow third graders to use the hot glue station. And then this is the hot glue um, lamp. So when the hot glue is on, the lamp is on. And when they're off, this is off. So this is for them, but it's also for me. So I don't forget to turn my hot glue gun off. So here we have some cardboard cutting tools, clever cutters. These safe tools for kiddos to use, even the youngest. There's um, a blade, but it's protected by this little hood. Glue, glue clamps. We use clothespins and binder clips. Gloves. These are for working with hot glue. I have them put those on to protect their hands. Elmer's glue is stored here, and then I keep tacky glue in these little containers that come with a brush on the lid, kind of like a nail polish jar. And extra hot glue sticks are here. My visuals here, this would be fiber arts and printmaking. So this used to be where the fiber arts and printmaking center are. This year I've condensed it. So this will be both fiber arts and printmaking. You'll notice I have some tape here. So I ration the tape out for sculpture. Otherwise my kids would rely on it way too heavily. I do let my students have about 12 inches of tape per class and then I just stick it here. I am not sure where I am going to stick it once I open fiber arts and printmaking, maybe on the chalkboard. But this big blue bag here, so sometimes I get random donations of things. So someone donated this huge gift, gift bag full of other gift bags. So I didn't have anywhere else to put it, so it's here right now, and the students can use these bags at collage, or if they have another idea, they are welcome to them. But the rule is it cannot be a bag when it leaves this classroom. So this is my fiber arts and printmaking center. I've got over here, this section, I've got like the needles and thread, fabric, scissors, beads. This is tack or not tacky glued, hot glue to the top, uh, pin cushion, keep some aluminum foil here for mono printing. And sometimes we use it at sculpture over here. These are jelly plates. I have dry markers. We use dry markers for mono printing. Stencils are in these plastic bags and found objects here. And then I have um, some other printing tools here. These leaves that we use sometimes and then bench hooks as well. So this table used to be my finishing center, which is why I have all of this Artsonia 
um, visuals there. So underneath here, in this, in these two organizers, um, one is for fiber arts and one is for printmaking. So I have not opened either center yet, but I will soon. And I'm having kiddos are making some signage and labels for those centers as we speak. Um, Cause I do think the signage is very important for a smooth running center. So my yarn is in here. I have three holes drilled and I will thread it through and the kiddos will cut from there. I only offer three colors just to make it simple. Um, again, I don't have much storage right now. Fabric is kept here. Looms are kept here. I have pre-made looms, but I also show them how to make their own looms. Over here, these are ink plates for printmaking. Ink is in this drawer, and then down here we keep the brayers. Messy mats are here, and I talk more about how I use these messy mats. Again, I will link that in the card above, but basically each class has a color so that when they put their artwork on the drying rack, I know whose class it belongs to, and I can easily remove them the next day and put it in the appropriate folder. So this is my favorite area in the art room. It is called Inspiration Station. So this is basically a resource center. It's set up to help students who need an idea or need help coming up with an idea. So I keep books at this center, lots of art books here, and in this organizer as well. Um, I do have an idea jar. Some kiddos just want to get right to work, so I respect that by providing them with some ideas on sticks. Binders are here, so each center has a binder, so this would be the painting binder. I keep some information, so I have some pictures of the visuals that I keep on the inside of cabinets in case I need to put this directly at someone's desk if they need um, a close visual to help them with the materials or how to set up, those are there. And then the middle section is student artwork. So artwork that other kids have made at the painting center. And then in the very back, we have some famous artwork um, for the kids to see as well to provide inspiration. So here we have the mini museum and I have some curator cards here. So this is kind of a clever setup that one of the students made earlier this morning. I have artists. So this would be Faith Ringgold. I have their names written down and I just painted these peg people. And then I have artwork here and extra artworks here. I have my 3D artwork taped to blocks and then 2D artwork is in a frame. And then I have mini easels here. So I also keep these right here because right outside the store, and I will show you that eventually, I have a big box for collecting recyclables for the Sculpture Center. So I keep extras of these donation lists just right here so that if a kiddo asks, I just grab this and give it to them so they know what to donate to the Sculpture Center. So right next to Inspiration Station is the Painting Center. So again, signage is minimal, just the basics. And then on the inside of these cabinets here, I have some different signage that I can reference if they need it. I just open these cabinets and show them what they need. So when I open the painting center, I show them that this is here. If they ever need a reminder on how to set up, they can grab or they can open this cabinet and go down the list. Here we have our paint shirts. They are just t-shirts that are cut down the middle to make it easy to go, to go on and off. And then I keep them, I store them in this laundry basket. So when it comes time to throw them in the laundry at my house, I can easily just grab this basket and go. So on the counter here, I have the materials that are available to all of my grades. So all grades can use tempera cakes. I have the green removed from those tempera cakes because I want all of my kiddos to know how to mix colors. So they have their primary colors and white and black. I keep some color mixing formulas here, basic brush care, and then these cabinets are just my storage, so watercolors. We have some materials that mostly third graders use, sometimes second graders at the end of the year, but I have some um, 
brushes, some nicer brushes, higher quality, some fan brushes um, in this bin. This bin has quick sticks and um, like watercolor pencils, straws and Q-tips. Over here we have, if a student mixes a new color or discovers a new color when they're mixing, they can fill in this color, give it a name and claim it. And then down here, this is my watercolor shelf. So this is for third grade, um, really my best watercolor palettes and then my best watercolor brushes. So my sink area is pretty simple. Um, this side of the sink is for painting cleanup, washing hands, and the other side of the sink is for clay cleanup and washing hands. So I keep a bucket with rags for wiping tables down, and then I just keep a simple drying mat here for the kiddos to put their palettes in water cups. And then underneath, I have water cups here, and then over here I have some boxes for the inevitable splatter paintings. So over here we have the clay center. So this is my cook me cart and right now it is also housing my cutting board and the land of lost art. Again, just because of spacing issues, I am not sure at this point where I will put both of these things when I finally open the clay center, but I'm sure I will find something. Um, but basically the cook me cart is where students put their artwork if they are finished and they want to put it in the kiln or they want me to put it in the kiln. And what I do, they put it in a specific box. So if their class number is 117, they will put it in the 117 box and then that class has a code. I stamp it with the appropriate code. So if they were my B class, I would stamp it with the letter B. So on the counter here at the clay center, I have a rehydration station, uh, the clay hospital we call it. So clay that's starting to dry out, we can put here for rehydration. I keep a rehydration bucket over here. Um, I have some plaster here, some canvas board. Down here, these are the tools that kiddos can use. So clay tools I keep in this cabinet and I store my glaze in these two boxes so that when it's time to glaze, I just pull these out. And then these are dollar store containers and I have hot glued a sample, a glaze sample to the top. And these are really great because the kiddos can just flip these out and then take the lid off. And then when, it's, when they're done, they snap them back. So they're really great for the littles um, and really great so the kiddos can help themselves to the glaze they need. I keep it pretty simple as far as colors, just basically one of each. Down here, this is where the clay is stored. I have a spritz bottle for the clay manager and then just random tools like texture, rollers, combs, bowls. Cabinet, I keep clay boards and rolling pins. This is the containers where I usually would keep this slip. Um, but I just have, I think this is like a masonite board with canvas stapled onto it. That way I don't have to worry about doing the whole table in case I need it for something else or I close the center. Um, I just have these boards here and then rolling pins as well. And then my, what you need is right here. This is my storage room. So it's overly cramped right now. A lot of this furniture was out in the classroom pre-COVID, but uh, no, with nowhere to go, it's now in my storage room. So I store by center just to make things easy. So my fiber art storage is all the way at the end. I have um, yarn, felds, fabric, and then these two, actually I lied. This one is sculpture, painting, printmaking, and the other side, drawing and collage items. And then but what I really wanna show you, obviously I also keep sculpture items stored back here. And then over here, this is what I wanted to show you. So each class, this is for the clay center. So each class has a class box. So it's just a copy paper box with a, their room number and their class code. So I bring these out. So when the 202 class comes, I bring it out and put it on the clay cart. And then when it's time to finish their artwork, they put it in this box and I stamp it with the letter A. Over here, I have some adaptive tools. So I have um, pencil boxes with adaptive tools for each center. So if any kid needs it, they can grab these. So in the draw, this is kind of draw and collage. I have the visuals um, from their support teacher. I keep that here, or I, I label each box with that visual. 
and then I have chunky crayons, these crayons, I'm not sure what these are called, and then I also keep um, spring scissors in here as well, some purple glue sticks, and then I have one for clay, I have a beading one, and then paint as well. I have some um, bulbed paint brushes there. Then I have some of these Legos that I keep here. I forget what these are actually called. I have a slant board with, this is shelf liner to prevent the art from slipping. And then here, this, these are foam shapes. So, foam shapes so the kiddos can draw on a, a felt board. I'm sorry, foam, I was calling them foam. Felt shapes. And I used to keep a felt board here, um, but again, it's I don't have it this year, but hopefully that will be back up so that the kiddos can use the felt shapes to draw as well. So here we have the um, architecture center. So I have, this is an Ikea organizer. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I have nine different materials here. I've got Tinker Toys, Kiva Planks, Legos, Plus Plus Blocks, Straws and Connectors, Creative Flakes, Marble Maze, um, Connects, and just regular wooden blocks here. So on top of the architecture center, I have our brag tags. So brag tags, I have one for each art squad member or one for each studio habit. And the students can grab one of these whenever they display that behavior. So the determinator is for engage and persist. The practicer is for develop craft. And the storyteller is for express. So these are the only three members that we've learned about so far this year. Once we've learned about the other five, I will fill the box with them and the students can grab them when they are displaying that behavior so it becomes a way for them to self-assess. So the last thing I want to show you is my favorite hidden center in the art room which is behind my projector. So this is my puppet theater that I open every now and then throughout the year. Um, it starts with a demonstration on making various puppets and then I let the kids put on a little show with the puppets that they make. Thank you so much for watching and going on this tour of the art room with me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment so that I can get back to you. And uh, thanks for being here. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.